just a, a little spill on the on the Boosie Connect, just so people can understand what that whole run was about. Like when you guys took off and was you know campaigning, it was for the book, right? Okay, so uh, basically, when I do a deal, I'm dealing, doing a deal with a corporation. So these corporations have stipulations in their contracts, and one of the stipulations in the contract is that we must promote and market the book. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. Yeah, man. Check it, man. Hey, man, y'all hear the voice, man. Y'all see who in here, man. Pippi Ken's in the building, man. Thank you for coming back on Boss Talk 101. Hey, thank you for having me again. Man, Pippi Ken, man. Listen, man. Say, man, you one of them guys, man. Like I said, last time I seen you run, man, I seen you was on... Uh, Drink champs. I seen you was on uh, 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 back on Beehive, and you shouted me out. Yeah. So and, and he shouted me out. And, and no jumper. And no jumper. I see you, man. You been everywhere. Yeah, man. I and, uh, I was I was there at eighty five South. So they they mentioned my name. You, you was know. there. Yeah, you hear me say Pippa Kim right there. When yeah, 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 yeah. Boosie, yeah. Man, so so I mean, just a, a little spill on the on the Boosie Connect, just so people can understand what that whole run was about. Like when you guys took off and was you know campaigning, it was for the book, right? Okay, so uh, basically, when I do a deal, I'm dealing, doing a deal with a corporation. So these corporations have stipulations in their contracts, and one of the stipulations in the contract is that we must promote and market the book. So uh, it's my responsibility to make sure that Boosie is at all these uh, talk shows and podcasts and, you know, whatever, you know, promotion and marketing. So, you know, as, as the agent, you know, under Hip Hop Fraternity Literary Agency, you know, we have to make sure that the artist is on point. So my job is to call you guys up as I called everyone up. And then Boosie's job is to come and do the interview. Uh, sometime, you know, Boosie... He's not gonna do an interview for everybody unless they got some money, mm -hmm. you know. So he might like, I ain't doing it for the free free, but you know, uh, in some way he was obligated, you know, through contract to do those interviews. So I, I was just there to represent Simon and Schuster, which is my business partner. So anytime you know we do a deal with an artist or something like that, you're probably gonna see me somewhere around because I get the itinerary and then I I make the contacts, send the books out to the podcasters, you know, make sure I, you know, get the communication going. Man, I just, I, I love the, the the way that you guys vibe as well, you know, uh, Boosie being a brother and, and you being so deeply embedded into hip hop. You know, people don't realize how deeply embedded you are mm -hmm. in the hip hop game. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Hip yeah. hop fraternity, was, was, that was something that now you came with, but you always been a part of the coach. Hip hop fraternity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you always been there. Like, well, you know, I met Boosie uh, when he was. He had to be about eighteen. I was uh, in the studio uh, to do. Uh, I think his name Terrell. I don't know if I'm Trill. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we was all at at, at the studio and Pimp C and I were there and Webby and Boosie was there and that's when I met Boosie the first time and I never talked to him. His name, but Pimp said that dude gonna be a cold dude. And then years later, you know, I met him uh, uh, at, in Milwaukee, I believe, and he didn't have a jacket on. And I had two mink coats, so I gave him a mink coat. He just reached in his pocket, gave me a wad, $100 bills. And from then, we was cool. And then when I went to Baton Rouge, I was at the casino gambling. I won like 20 bands, you know, I was just happy. I was like, man, I'm gonna call Boosie, you know. And I called him. I just wanted to tell somebody that was around in that area. And it, the place was like five minutes, 10 minutes from his crib. So I called him and we met at the gas station. I went to his house, I did a song with him. And then he went to jail. What was the name of that song? I don't even know, man. You don't remember? I did like three songs for Boosie. That shit never came. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why Boosie won't put, Boosie put them, 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 all them tracks we got out, man. All this game I spit, you got to put that Man, DeRoe said that he was down there with him right before. They had a remix, I think he said, the Ice Cream Paint Job. And then the, he said, man, I should have got a copy of it because they confiscated everything and, and, and took him to jail the next day. I say, what? Yeah. The week Boosie got locked up, for that, that long stint he did, that what I think it was like four years or whatever, or however long that was he did, yeah. that same week I was at his crib in Laos, uh, in Louisiana, Louisiana, in Baton Rouge. In Baton Rouge, I was at his house and we was work, we was working on some stuff that ended up getting the computer got took because when the feds raided his, it was it was probably some days late. And what was messed up is I remember leaving his crib. It was late and I was tired and I was just like, I should probably get these files. 
from the session. I was like, man, I can just I gotta hit him up. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, I can get him in anytime. And I didn't get him. And three days later, he his place got raided. They Bang. took it, everything, computer, never gave it back. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you, you never know when you're doing this stuff what's going to happen, right? Absolutely, man. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.